Just let's go over the rules one more time. We have rules for the candidates. We have rules for the crowd. For the candidates, you'll be posed a question. You'll have one, up, one minute to answer it. Uh, then uh, both sides will have one minute to answer. And then the per first person to whom I ask a question will have 30 seconds to rebut. Next go around, we'll do the switch. For the crowd, again, just to, to go over the, the questions have been in writing, given me before. They haven't been vetted by the UPCCA. Scott hasn't looked at them. Nobody associated with the UPCCA has looked at them. It's impossible to ask all the questions. It's not a reflection on the question. It's a reflection on the numbers we, of questions we've got. And unless we want to be here till about 2 o'clock in the morning, we're going to limit the number of questions. So again, please don't take offense if your question is not asked. If you want to get mad at anybody, get mad at me. Please don't get mad at anybody at UPCCA. Um, you guys did a good job. I forgot to mention uh, Gray up front with the timekeeper. So we'll go ahead and get started. The first question will be for Representative Woodall and Mr. White. We'll start there, and then we'll make our way down as we did before. How close are we to serious consideration of any fair tax or flat tax legislation? This was not the question that I put in the box uh, <laughs> earlier. Uh, but the, the short answer is you have to have a president who believes in fundamental tax reform to really be close to fundamental tax reform. You may remember George Bush picked between Social Security reform and tax reform uh, when he was elected his second term. He picked Social Security reform, didn't succeed at that either, but tax reform could not be done without him. What we are doing, Jim, is we've added more co-sponsors across the country than we've ever had before on the fair tax. We've had a hearing on the fair tax in the tax writing committee for the first time in over a decade. I've gotten the fair tax language included in the House passed budget uh, not once but twice for the first time uh, ever. And I have been guaranteed a vote by the Ways and Means Committee chairman that if we bring funda fundamental tax reform to the floor, the fair tax will get a vote in that series. This isn't going to be won by Washington. This is going to be won by America. And I would tell you America is winning this debate today. We need a president who believes in us as well. When you elect me, fair tax will die. This is why. It is time that we brought taxes into the daylight, and fair tax is another hidden tax. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want real tax reform, you need to end income tax withholding and other forms of hidden taxes. And fair tax is essentially a VAT tax that will be hidden in the cost of everything that you buy. What we need is fundamental tax reform, Mr. Woodall and I agree on that. The fa tax reform we need is tax reform that encourages savings and investment. The tax reform we need is tax reform that ends income tax withholding and other forms of hidden taxes. We need to bring taxes to light. That will result in two things. One, simplification of the tax code, and two, responsible spending by Congress, which will be a new thing. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. I, I agree uh, with Thomas. I, I do think hidden taxes are exactly the problem, but that's why we introduced the fair tax. The fair tax is the only proposal on Capitol Hill that abolishes payroll tax uh, withholding. It's the only proposal on Capitol Hill that sucks all the hidden uh, taxes uh, out of goods and makes them uh, 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 there for the entire population to see. If we're going to bring jobs back to America, it's going to be by eliminating those hidden taxes, having a tax code that leads the world and doesn't follow it. Thank you. Next question will be for the candidates for Georgia Senate District 40. Senator Miller, what is your position on com Common Core? I've dealt, with, whoa, I've dealt with education for the past 16 years as a business person. And I'm a member of the Southern Regional Education Board, which is probably, I think, one of the finest think tanks. I see Mary Kay nodding her head in the, in the, in the nation. Uh, they support the Common Core standards. Uh, Governor Deal supports the Common Core standards. The State Board of Education voted on these standards for Georgia. They support the Common Core standards. And I support the Common Core standards. I think what the issue really is as respects Common Core is more in the assessment piece. And I think there are issues with that. I think if you look at some of this math curriculum that uh, people, and I noticed how they said that curriculum, okay? The curriculum, there are some issues there. And again, it's up to 
the local school systems to pick that curriculum. Alvin Wilbanks has done that every two years with parents, with teachers. And at the bottom line, in this state, 75% of the teachers want us to keep the Common Core standards. Well, I'm not sure of the 75 teachers, but I've talked to a lot of teachers and I, they don't like the Common Core standards. Um, I'm a mom, we're just watching this whole thing. Like I say, education is, is totally my platform and just watching how even the curriculum that we have today with, with my children, I can't help them with their homework to the extent that I would like to because it is not the same. It is, it's not the same education that I got growing up. So I don't, I am not a, a fan of the Common Core. What Tamara said, there's standards and there's curriculum. Standards means every child in this nation, when they finish third grade, ought to have certain knowledge and skills. Curriculum is determined by the local boards of education, folks. If you don't like your textbooks, then you need to talk to your local board of education. Big difference between standards and curriculum. I'll make sure everybody understands it. Thank you, Mary Kay, for nodding. I appreciate it.